What's going on, dude? It's, uh, it's been a minute. Yeah, my apologies for that. I, I've just been really busy with work, and I committed to UAM Bingo. There was a event for my clan I had to do. They're just excuses, you know. Before I really get into things here, I just have to address this. Even though it's been a while since episode 3, the channel has been thriving. And that's thanks to one big thing. I really want to give a big thank you to Kemp Q and the team over at RuneScape Chronicles. These guys decided to feature the episode 3 montage in its entirety, which I was never expecting. So I decided to make them the sequence to use for their show. Thanks to them and another shout out from Behe, we pretty much destroyed the 1k sub goal. <laughs> to celebrate 1k subs, I worked on something that I pretty much knew everyone was gonna like. I'll go ahead and link this right here, but this is a tribute to Bodhi's One Man Army series. Honestly, without him having paved the way, we probably wouldn't even have Iron Man or any of its counterparts in the game today, I reckon. Thanks again, King. Yeah, so last episode we basically had a mental breakdown. Uh, yeah, I'm not even lying, like I literally did have a nightmare or two about wiping and losing everything. As a result, we kind of moved on to a more skilling focus for the series, at least for the time being. Starting with green logging mahogany homes. After that, we headed to the wilderness to wrap up combat achievements before the wilderness bosses got changed. As for today's content, I dropped the hint that you've seen it in every episode, but it's never been specifically mentioned. The thumbnail probably gave it away, but it's Tombs of a Mask It. It made an appearance in the intro, despite the fact that I never talked about it once during the game plan in episode 1. That wasn't really intentional, it mostly just happened as a result of my clips getting way far behind, like even today I'm months behind on footage. A quick example of that is the fact that I just recently released the UIM bingo montage, the UIM snowdown, that just recently happened. That montage is gonna show up in this series, but not until like episode 8, you know? Like, it's a mess, I'm super far behind. There's one last quick thing I want to talk about before moving on to today's content. I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying that I should go for a golden gnome. It does feel a little bit awkward like gassing myself up like this, but I'm very proud of what I've been able to accomplish so far. And I would say that honestly there's really just one category that I'm going for that I feel like I have a shot at, which is best artistic creation with my Wildy Boss send off. If you think of me for best new artist, please consider going for the Scold or Uber instead. None of the stuff I've made would have been possible without their help, really. I've been told that people with less views and subs than me have won in the past, so please help me out. There's a link in the description. If there was a golden gnome for longest intros, oh, that would be me for sure. Just like everybody else, I was waiting for TOA to release, so I did Myth Cape Rex in Prif while I was waiting. The UAM method for this is really simple actually, you just chop Teaks in Prif, load up your plank sack, head back to your POH, make all those mythical cape racks, rinse and repeat, I don't know, like a million times. <laughs> Maybe not a million, but you know, you get it, it's a lot. One really nice thing to break up the monotony though is the bird nests that drop that have clues in them. This is really good for passively getting a lot of beginner, easy, and medium clues. I don't really like to do hard in elite though because the combat steps kind of sketch me out when I'm risking everything in Hespori. Beginner casket? <laughs> Water runes. Thank you, Charlie. A little beginner casket? <laughs> hey, collection log. We love it. Sandwich lady bottom. Excuse the voice crack. Oh, but that's lovely, isn't it? I just, yeah. It just looks so nice. It's an easy casket. Let's go. I already have a bob shirt, but that's collection log. That's great. Oh goodness, that's the first construction level of the grind. Oh, I gotta take a minute to just take that in because I know it's probably gonna be a week or so <laughs> or the next one. Oh snap, 2250. I just, I just realized that. 
Let's go. That's the last total level milestone. Wow. I can't believe it. That's crazy. I find it kind of funny that this step, you have to like answer a question for the medium clue, but for the elite clue, he just gives it to you right away with no. <laughs> Anybody else notice that? Yoink. Oh, crystal shards. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, here we go. Medium casket. Mm. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just like chilling here and I just hear the fanfare go. Oh, that's so, that's awesome. Sweet. Now I can start catching sharks. This is quite lovely, actually. Significantly more AFK. It's been a hot minute since one of these. Ooh. Those are so few and far between now. Four more to go, baby. Hello, Lion. Jesus. Give me a heart attack, dude. I come bearing an urgent message from Mesa. Mesa? What? Oh. Wait a minute. Aren't you Dune Lord? What are you doing out of the desert, dude? But better yet, how'd you get to Priftinus? Actually, I have no idea how I got here. But anyways, a mascot's power has grown too strong. Your assistance is required in the desert. Say less, bro. I am losing my mind here anyways. It is time to jump into some tombs of a mascot. My plan is to just go get a threat because people are pulling these things left and right and I figured why not. I'll be turning up the invocations just enough to be eligible for some slim chance of Osmumpton's Fang or the Lightbearer Ring. Both of these would be substantial upgrades for the account. Currently I have no intentions to grind this content until after Bofa and even after Max. So much of this clip was just misinformation and not knowing anything about the raid so i'm gonna go ahead and voice it over now instead 
I did a little bit of TOA on my Normie before sending it on my UAM just to kind of get my toes in the water a little bit. All I really was after with this first initial kind of TOA grind here was to get that thread of validness. I'll put it on screen here what it does. Basically all it does is just adds an extra slot to that rune pouch, which for UIMs is like so big because that's a whole extra inventory slot. Like that, it's kind of a big deal. My initial plan with Tombs of a Masket was to wait until the dust settled and metas were figured out and everything. But when I started hearing how easy it is to get the thread, I dropped everything and jumped right on it. I honestly thought they were going to nerf the drop rate because it was too common. The other thing that really sold me on jumping into TOA is that if you have those death invocations, those first four invocations turned off, you can safely do this content as a UIM with all your stuff in Hespori. This first time around, I was kind of hesitant to just full send that. You can see all that random crap in my inventory. That's because I didn't fully trust the idea, but... I wanted to send it anyways and see if I could pull an early thread. So this was my first run on my UIM. Zback is a very well done boss in my opinion. Just a fatty croc that's just throwing mage and range attacks at you. You gotta dodge all this garbage around the room. Oh, and he throws out this roar that if you're not interacting with the mechanics properly, you're just, you're getting leveled. Next we have Kefri. So Kefri is this giant bug that's sitting on a dung mound. Rightfully so, this whole fight revolves around her throwing crap at you. Literally. The most important thing that I can communicate to you guys about this fight is how sick the animations are. My goodness, like they such a good job. Like I think they actually had to innovate a whole new animation software in order to do this fight. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to try my hardest to present Baba in a non-biased fashion. <laughs> Thematically, this is such a cool concept, such a cool boss. All the mechanics thematically seem so cool. But then you do them and you're like, man, this is kind of annoying. It's gotten a lot better since release, but there's just so many little irksome things. Not to mention, I just suck. Look at me. I'm just getting leveled by the boulders. Akka is just mwah, chef's kiss, dude. I, what else is there to say about Akka? Like, dude, he's so cool. He keeps you on your toes with gear and prayer switching. He tests your memory. And then he has a happy ending on top of it. I mean, what's not to like, right? Okay, so now we have the Wardens, which is the final fight. My opinion on this fight, it might be kind of a hot take. I was extremely underwhelmed by these bosses, um, and that's not just because I was on low invocation. When you look at the complexity of Ohm and Verzik, this just, man, this just doesn't hit that, that difficulty level. When I heard about some twin giants when they pitched that, man, I was really thinking you're fighting both at the same time. I'm not going to go too far into the weeds on this concept, but if anyone's familiar with World of Warcraft, there's a desert raid in that game that has a twin emperor's boss, and you fight them both at the same time. They heal each other if they get too close to each other. There's just so many intricate mechanics dealing with these two bosses together. And yeah, it just didn't scratch the itch here. When I heard it, I really thought it could have been a lot more than it was. Alright, fine, I'll get off my soapbox now, jeez. Despite the fact you don't fight them at the same time, they do a good job of adding other things to the fight, like the obelisk in phase 2, and the phantom showing up in phase 3. I, I do like that. And it does get kind of crazy with higher invocations during this lightning phase, so... Yeah, I mean, hats off to them for that stuff. I just wish the other warden could be in there somewhere doing something, you know? Okay, yeah, I'm getting a lot smoother at it. I think I still have like a ton of brews. Yeah, <laughs> I still have so many supplies. I might be able to turn it up a notch, but like I don't really even see the point because I'm just trying to get a thread right now. There we get. Yeah, no purple as expected. Red, please. Oh, that's that easy. It's that easy. I, I knew it was going to be that easy. I, I just had a feeling I'd only be here for one night. <laughs> that is what we came for. I know what you're thinking right now. What does he mean by a big detour? He got it on his second KC. I'm about to show you what I mean, don't worry. But before I do that, I have to explain something to you. 
Sometimes when brand new content is released, certain things get overlooked, especially for UIM. I don't blame them because we're a small community of the game and they can't think about everything for every single game mode. What I'm referring to is something that we call poofing. It's commonly known that UIM often need to die throughout their gameplay to access what's called a death bank or a DB for short. What I've put on screen here is me basically ranting about how I lost my lit lantern from Guardians of the Rift because I had to suicide to rearrange my gear. Um, yeah, this happens with new updates sometimes. They usually address it pretty quickly, but when you get something really quick into an update, you gotta be cautious of this, and apparently I didn't learn my lesson the first time around. Or at least I thought I did. I actually thought I was being smart in this following clip here. Alright, so I'm still a little bit worried about the the issues that UAMs were having with the rune patch poofing. So I'm gonna suicide first and then get the pouch out and augment it. Because then I'll be settled into construction again, which I'm gonna be doing for a long time. Here's the moment of truth though. <laughs> if the thread poofs, that's no good. We shall see. Crossing my fingers, I'll see you over at Hispori. Okay, here we go. Oh. I see. Oh, that hurts a little bit. You see, because I, I heard that they did fix it, and I thought that I was being safe by not using it. Dang, dude. That's painful. Uh, do I want to regear and go get another one? Huh. I'll have to think about it. I decided I'm gonna keep going just to get another thread. It's really frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. It's pretty common, so hopefully I get semi-spooned on it again. Pretty easy. Yeah, 95. I guess I used all my brews, so a little bit harder than before. Let's see a purple? How crazy would that be, right? Negative. Not expected, but please give me the back to back thread. I would love it. Thread, please? Nah, not today. Another easy KC. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I think I actually am ready to bump this up to normal. I might need to make some changes in my inventory, but yeah, I mean, it, it kind of just seems like. I'm ready for the next step. Okay. Pretty good loot, but not what I'm looking for. Alright, overclocked. Here we go. Oh, freak. Okay, here we go. Changed. Yeah, I just gotta keep that blow pipe DP. Oh, this. I don't wanna talk too soon, but this seems kinda free actually. Okay, I guess hitting hard. OP Ambrosia. Oh, that's so beady. I'm already in full health again. Oh, wow. <laughs> It is a lot to pay attention to, to be fair. Aka changed. I got it preemptively this time. Oh my days. Do I have more Ambrosia? I do. Ambrosia go? Okay, I have barely enough. This is kind of... Woohoo! My first normal. Let's go. Happy with that? Now I could actually get a purple. Nah, not lucky though. Let's see the thread, please. What is that loot, dude? That's terrible loot. Holy crap. Most of the time I just soloed this, but when my buddy Matt wanted to duo, I'd send one with him. Very clean. Oh, that was so clean. Purple shot. Alright, baby. Give us something wonderful. Oh, is that a PB? Oh, that's a nice yeah. PB. I mean, we still would have just barely gotten walk for it, but you know. White chest, no luck. Redeem me with right. red. 
Uh, oh, uh, blood is. Okay, all right, that's acceptable. Why do I feel like the drop rate of thread like got lower? <laughs> it was one in a hundred off they you hot, the first time. They hot fixed it on me. I guarantee you. As it turned out, Matt was actually spot on with this. It does get rarer after you receive one already. It's about 1 in 50, I think. I don't think there's any concrete numbers on that, but based on data I've seen, that's pretty much what it is. If I could just get the thread right now, that'd be fantastic. Mm, that's the wrong unique. Yeah, that one was like a lot smoother. Oh, oh, oh. That's not the fourth item I want to see. Alright, so hear me out here. My only intention at TOA right now is just to get the thread and move on. I really can't be hanging on to every little thing I get, especially untradeables, because you can't even bag those. If there was any way for me to know beforehand how much of a grind this would be, I would have kept that 100%, but it just made sense to alk it at this point. Man, I'll admit, I was getting pretty frustrated because I was just here for the thread. So I made a decision to improve my chances at a purple by pushing the invocations as high as I could go. Since I was using a blowpipe for my primary weapon on Wardens, I really noticed that 200 is the max that you really want to go, because it's just so inconsistent beyond that point. Bro, oh, blowpipe is not doing it anymore. I am just taking all kinds of unnecessary damage here. Blowpipe, come on. Clutch it out, dude. Stay on the front row. Blowpipe. Nah, 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 nah. Getting hit by stupid stuff. Oh no! What hit me 32? Was that Akka? Oh my gosh, dude. Oh. That is very frustrating. The boost from the smelly salts has worn off. We call it the snips. <laughs> <laughs> Brush the salts, your heart rate increases. It sounds like. It does sound like. <laughs> <laughs> I still needed to get some blender and editing and stuff like that in, so I would come here to go for this collection log. I mistakenly didn't have Shadowplay turned on, so I just recorded this after the fact, but this is nice, but it does mean that the only thing left for fishing is the big bass, which is like, it's not nearly as AFK, and we don't like that around here. Here we are, 40 KC. No more restores left to do another run. I gotta do some resupplying, so please, red if not purple. No purple. Oh man, I beg, dude, I beg. It would be so perfect right now. It just... Come on, man. I gotta make me resupply. Alright, there we have it. That is 50 KC normals. Sad, dude. It's so sad that people are getting... People are getting, like, purples left and right, it seems like. I just can't get one in 50, man. It's, it's sad I'm over the drop rate right now. I know, I know what you're thinking. Oh, this dude's complaining and he's barely dry. The sound of defeat in my voice is really because of the thread. At this point, I kind of had enough, honestly. I was just ready to finish this. And after talking to some friends about what I should do, they recommended going back to entry for the thread because it seemed like at that point it was more common from entry modes. Then there was also the perk that if it was a purple, it was more likely to be the fang, which I cared the most about. Hope that makes sense. Okay, there's the 15th entry. Negative. Where's my fang? I want a fang. I also want a freaking thread! Okay, here we are at this point once again. I've run out of restores. <laughs> Each time I go and replenish restores, I always think this time for sure is going to be the time I get the thread, but once again, I gotta go replenish restores. I'm probably going to go back to 200 invocation just because I feel like I'd like to see a purple at this point for how much work I've put in. That's going to be... Uh, I mean, a thread would have ended it right there, but yeah. 
Looks like that's what I'm doing then. I'm going to 200 invocation. Uh, sorry if I sound weird. I'm, I'm kind of sick right now. So, anyways, yeah, going back to 200. All right, there's 60 KC. Oh, purple. This feels pretty bad, man. Okay. There's another 10 KC milestone. Please, something good. <laughs> well. I guess Kefri just got easier. That's not what I wanted, to be honest. I gotta use it now that I got it, right? All right, so let me level with you guys. I'm sure there's at least a couple of you out there who are ready to comment, man, you just, if you can't handle the grind, get out of the grinder. With my schedule and my responsibilities, I basically get to raid two to four times a night if I'm lucky. This grind has taken over a month so far and I really don't have that much to show for it. Alright, <clears throat> that is a fateful KC. I would be happy about this, but uh, when you haven't received a unique drop and the rate is somewhere around 1 in 40 to 1 in 50, it does feel pretty bad to be honest. But there's plenty of people who are more dry and on higher invocation than I am, so there's not much to complain about. Who am I kidding? There's plenty to complain about. Admittedly, that's a little bit of a sad note to end an episode on, but really, I've been doing TOA for weeks, months? I really kind of just screwed myself over with that whole thread situation. On a more positive note though, TOA is infinitely more fun than the construction grind that I was doing. And yeah, as I stated previously, I am determined to get a purple now. I've put in too much work to not see a purple. Before I wrap this up, I need to give a big thank you to Exerkeen for collaborating with me on my montage for this episode. He has an amazing Desert Locked Ultimate series. You guys gotta go check it out. I actually featured him before in like the clan hall scene with all the, you know, all stars of UIM. You're a beast, bro. Thanks for working with me. As for next episode, you guessed it, I'm way too stubborn to give up now. We're getting that thread and I'm getting a purple for crying out loud. Not to mention I'm making two montages for next episode. If you watched this far, hit me up with a like and a sub if you're not. And if you can't get enough of my content, please consider voting for me for the Golden Gnome. I'd really appreciate your vote. Catch you on the flip side, Deb.